Hello everyone, this is Dr. Prashant and welcome back to Public Health Series. In this video, I will be briefly explaining family planning along with methods of contraception. To start with family planning, it's a way of thinking and living that is adopted voluntarily upon the basis of knowledge, attitudes and responsible decisions by individuals and couples in order to promote the health and welfare of the family group and thus contribute effectively to the social development of a country. Through family planning, couples or individuals can achieve the following objectives. They are to avoid unwanted births, to bring about wanted births and to regulate the intervals between pregnancies and to control the time at which birth occurs in relation to the ages of parent. And the last is to determine the number of children in the family. India was the first country to launch a national program for family planning that was in 1952 and in 1977 it got changed to National Family Welfare Program. And the main objective of the program was to reduce the fertility rate and it was implemented as a people's program which involved the active cooperation of the community. Effective family planning services play a crucial role in controlling population growth and reproductive health care whereas the family welfare program aims to improve the quality of life of people. Now let's look at the evolution of family planning or the major milestones. The first plan has three strategies. They are widespread dissemination of information, informing the need for and describing the means of population control. Second is encouragement to the terminal method for the male population. Third is education with regard to spacing by use of male contraceptives. So in 1960, the focus was shifted to women, recognizing their centrality in the battle to control population. And later, the failure of delivery of the basic health requirements of the mother and child led family planning program to be integrated with the public health programs in all states. And in 1965, the first IUCD, that is Lippi's loop, was introduced. And in 1971, the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act, that is MTP Act, came into force, where the focus was towards the health of mother and female empowerment. In 1975, another IUCD that is Copper T200B was introduced and till 1990, all the programs designed were target oriented and driven by the achievement in numbers, for example, number of sterilizations. And in 1994, the International Conference on Population shifted the focus from a target approach to Community Needs Assessment, that is CNN. Then the RCH approach was adopted in 1997 as a national policy whereby target-free approach concept was maintained. And in 2000, the new population policy was introduced by Government of India and the main objective is to address the unmet need of contraception and to bring the TFR to replacement level of 2.1 by 2010. And in 2002, copper T380A was introduced which replaced copper T200B that was introduced in 1975. In 2005, the Government of India launched the National Rural Health Mission which subsumes the second phase of RCH program advocating the same approach for achieving quality reproductive life. These are some of the new interventions under family planning. First is Mission Parivar Vikas or MPV. Its aim is to increase contraceptive usage and decrease the fertility rates in 146 high TFR districts. So there are two promotional schemes under MPV. First is Nahi Pehel Kid. This is to promote family planning among newly married couples. So they are provided with basic contraceptive pills, some hygiene measures and some promotive materials related to contraception. Second is Saas Bahu Pati Sammelan. This is to improve communication between daughter-in-law, mother-in-law and husband through interactive games and activities. Next is introduction of new contraceptive choices like injectable contraceptives and scent chromin. Redesigned contraceptive packaging where they have improved the packaging of condoms, oral contraceptive pills and emergency contraceptive pills. Next is family planning logistics management system. It was launched to strengthen the supply chain management of family planning commodities. Now coming to COT scheme which is called as clinical outreach team scheme was launched in 146 Mission Parivar districts to provide family planning services through mobile teams. Next, a 360-degree media campaign has been launched to generate contraceptive demand in the population. Next is Enhanced Compensation Scheme for Sterilization. This was enhanced in 11 major high-focus states where the TFR or fertility rates is more than 2.1. Next is Emphasis on Post-Pregnancy Family Planning Services which include Promotion of Postpartum and Post-Abortion Contraception. Next is Promotion of IUCDs as a Spacing Method through introduction of Copper IUCD 375 which has 5 years effectivity under the family planning program. Next is scheme for ensuring drawback services to sterilization clients. 
appointment of dedicated RMNCH counsellors, scheme for home delivery of contraceptives by ASHAs, and scheme for ASHAs to ensure spacing in births. And last is Nishai kit. It is a pregnancy kit provided by ASHAs to the women in the community. Now coming to contraception, it is defined as the intentional prevention of consumption through the use of various devices, sexual practices, chemicals, drugs or surgical procedures. These are basically preventive methods to help women avoid unwanted pregnancies and they include all temporary and permanent measures to prevent pregnancy resulting from coitus. So contraceptive methods are broadly classified into two types. First is spacing method and second is terminal methods. So we will look into each of these methods very briefly with some examples. To begin with barrier methods, the aim of these methods is to prevent the live sperm from meeting the ovum. So there are three types of barrier methods. One is physical, chemical and combined. So some of the examples are for physical barrier methods, we use female and male condoms, diaphragm and vaginal sponge. Chemical barriers include spermicides which are in the form of foams, creams, jellies, etc. And combined barrier method include spermicide which is used in conjunction with barrier method. Next is intrauterine contraceptive devices or IU series. These are basically inserted in the uterus to prevent the pregnancy. So coming to the mechanism of action, it happens through foreign body reaction or through enhancing cellular response in the endometrium or by increasing viscosity of the cervical mucus. So there are basically three types of IU series, first, second and third generation. First generation are non-medicated devices and in second generation, copper is added for anti-fatality effect. And third generation IUDs are hormone releasing intrauterine devices. Now coming to the examples, first generation IUD, I already discussed it, Lippis loop. And in second generation IUD, there are two important devices. One is T380A and CU375. So 375 has five years effectivity, whereas copper T380A has 10 years effectivity. And examples of third generation IUDs include Progesta set, LNG20, also called as Mirina or Kylina. Now coming to hormonal methods, they are classified into two groups. One is oral pills and depot or slow release formulations. Under oral pills, we see combined pill, progestogen only pill, which is called as mini pill or micro pill, post coital contraception or emergency contraception, long acting pill once a month and fifth is male pill. Under depot or slow release formulations, we see injectable contraceptives, subdermal implants and vaginal rings. And the examples of combined pills include Mala N, Mala D and the post-coital contraception also called as emergency contraception or morning after pill. So important are Mifapristone and Livanor Gastrol. And the important examples of injectable contraceptives include MPA that is Medroxyprogesterone estate which gives 3 months protection and is given under Antara program. And other injective contraceptives include DMPA, Cyclofem, Cycloprovera and Mesigina. And fourth is subdermal implants. Examples include Norplant and Norplant R2. And now coming to post-conceptional methods, which is nothing but to terminate the pregnancy. Okay. So there are three types or three ways. One is menstrual regulation. Second is menstrual induction. Third is oral abortifacient. So the menstrual induction is done through application of prostaglandin F2 solution. Whereas oral abortifacient is through Mifapristone and Misoprostol. One is given orally and other is through vagina. Now coming to other forms of contraception, it includes complete sexual abstinence. Second is coitus interruptus, also called as male withdrawal method. And third is safe period or rhythm period that is through using menstrual cycle, also called as calendar method. Next is breastfeeding, which provides some degree of protection during lactation. And other natural family methods include basal body temperature method, also called as BBT method, where we can see rising temperature during the time of ovulation. Second is cervical mucus method where there is change in characteristics of cervical mucus during ovulation. Third is symptothermic method where it combines the temperature method, cervical mucus method and the calendar method. Now coming to the terminal methods of contraception which include male and female sterilization. So we will first look at the guidelines for sterilization. First is the age of the husband should not be less than 25 nor should it be more than 50 years. The age of the wife should not be less than 20 years or more than 45. And the motivated couple must have two living children at the time of operation. And if the couple has three or more living children, the lower limit of the age of the husband or wife may be relaxed. And five is the consent from the partner or the spouse. And now coming to the procedures of sterilization. For male sterilization, the procedure is called vasectomy 
and it can be performed in PHCs also. And for female sterilization, there are two methods. One is laparoscopy, that is through abdominal approach using laparoscope, and other is mini lap operation, which is a modification of abdominal tubectomy, where it is done through small abdominal incision under local anesthesia. And there is one more important contraceptive method that is non-hormonal in nature. So it is an oral contraceptive pill without any hormone. So example is Centchromin or Ormulozyphin. So it is usually available in public health facilities under the brand name Chaya, also called as Saheli tablet at some places. So now we have discussed about different contraceptive methods, right? So now we will look at effectiveness of contraceptive methods from less effective to more effective. So in less effective, we can see male and female condoms, withdrawal method, vaginal sponge and spermicides. And in mid-level effectiveness, we can see the injectable contraceptives, oral pills, patches, rings and diaphragm. And in more effective section, we can see the implants, IUDs and the sterilization process that is male and female sterilization. You can see some percentages next to each contraceptive method, right? Like 18%, 21%. It indicates the number out of every 100 women who experienced an unintended pregnancy within the first year of typical use of each contraceptive method. For example, for male condoms, it is 18%. That means 18 pregnancies per 100 women. So in the less effective section, you can see 18 or more pregnancies per 100 women in a year. And in mid-level effectiveness, you can see 6 to 12 pregnancies per 100 women in a year. And in more effective section, you can see less than 1 pregnancy per 100 women in a year. So you need to remember all these percentages if you are preparing for any competitive exam. Now coming to evaluation of contraceptive methods, there are two methods. One is Pearl Index and other is Life Table Analysis. Pearl Index is defined as the number of failures per 100 women years of exposure and the formula is total accidental pregnancies in the numerator and in the denominator we take total months of exposure multiplied by 1200. If months are used we will use 1200 but if cycles are used we need to use 1300 in place of 1200. So basically 1200 is nothing but 100 years of exposure right so 100 multiplied by 12 months because one year has 12 months and coming to numerator that is total accidental pregnancies it should include every known conception irrespective of outcome so it can be live birth stillbirth or abortions or had not yet terminated we need to include everything in the numerator now coming to denominator that is total months of exposure it is nothing but number of patients or women observed multiplied by months of use so I will be making a separate video for Pearl Index again along with other indexes using some numerical examples. So I will post that link in the comment section after posting it. Okay. Now coming to second method of evaluation that is life table analysis which calculates a failure rate for each month of use. So a cumulative failure rate can then compare methods for any specific length of exposure. And women who leaves the study for any reason other than unintended pregnancy are removed from the analysis contributing their exposure until the time of exit. I hope it's clear. Thank you.